Welcome to a lesson on linearly independent and dependent sets of vectors. To begin, linear independent and linear dependence are ideas that apply to a collection of vectors. The concept does not apply to individual vectors. To test for linear independence and dependence of a set of vectors, v sub one through v sub k, we solve the homogeneous vector equation where we have the linear combinations of vectors v sub one through v sub k equals the zero vector. If the vector equation only has a trivial solution, meaning c sub one through c sub k are all zero, then the set of vectors is linearly independent, which also means no vector is a linear combination and in the span of the other vectors. However, if the vector equation has non-trivial solutions, meaning solutions where c sub one through c sub k are not all zero, then the set of vectors v sub one through v sub k is linearly dependent, and this also means at least one of the vectors is a linear combination and in the span of the other vectors. Two vectors are linearly dependent if and only if they are collinear, meaning one is a scalar multiple of the other. Any set of vectors containing the zero vector is linearly dependent. The zero vector is a multiple of any vector. And then finally, if a subset of the vector set v sub one through v sub k is linearly dependent, then the entire set of vectors v sub one through v sub k is also linearly dependent. And now let's take a look at some graphs of sets of vectors that are linearly dependent and linearly independent. Here we have a graph of a set of two vectors in R2. Notice how the two vectors are scalar multiples of one another. The two vectors are also collinear, which indicates this set is linearly dependent. Also notice how if we looked at the span of just one of the vectors, it would be the line containing the vector this yellow line here. So if we started with the set containing one of the vectors and then added the second vector to the set, notice how the span does not get bigger, which is another indication that the set of vectors is linearly dependent. And here we have a set of two vectors in R2 that is linearly independent. Notice how the two vectors are not scalar multiples of one another and they are not collinear. The span of these two vectors in R2 would be the entire coordinate plane of each vector individually. The span of each individual vector would be the yellow lines, and therefore if we started with a set with one of the vectors and then included the second vector, the span would get bigger. Another indication, the set of vectors is linearly independent. And now take a look at a set in R3. For this set of three vectors in R3, notice how all three vectors are in the same plane, which means we can write one of the vectors as a linear combination of the others, which indicates a set is linearly dependent. Also notice how, if we take a look at the red and purple vectors, the span will be the yellow plane, and then by including the blue vector, which is also in the yellow plane, the span does not get bigger. Another indication, we have a linearly dependent set of vectors. And now if we compare that to this set of three vectors, notice how the third vector is now not in the yellow plane, and therefore the blue vector cannot be written as a linear combination of the purple and red vectors, and it's also not in the span of the purple and red vectors, indicating the set of vectors is linearly independent. By including the blue vector, the span gets bigger. So a set of vectors v sub one through v sub k is linearly dependent if and only if one of the vectors is in the span of the other vectors. If the vector in the span of the other vectors is removed, the span of the set is not affected. In a linearly dependent set of vectors, v sub one to v sub k, it is not generally true that any vector v sub j is in the span of the other vectors, but only that at least one of them is in the span of the other vectors. So let's take a look at two examples of showing whether a set of vectors is linearly independent or linearly dependent. Again, the first step is to set up the vector equation shown here at the bottom, where we have the linear combinations of the given vectors in the set equal to the zero vector, which I've already done here. We have c sub one times the first vector plus c sub two times the second vector plus c sub three times the third vector equals a zero vector. From here we can write the corresponding system of equations, which I've shown here on the right, where the first equation is two c sub one plus three c sub two plus c sub three equals zero. The second equation is c sub one plus zero plus zero equals zero or just c sub one equals zero. And then we have the third equation, which is zero 
plus two C sub two plus two C sub three equals zero, or two C sub two plus two C sub three equals zero. And the last equation is just zero plus C sub two plus zero equals zero, or C sub two equals zero. So from here we would normally set up an augmented matrix and then write the augmented matrix in reduce echelon form. But in this case, notice how the second equation tells us that C sub one must equal zero. The third equation tells us that C sub two must equal zero. And then if we use these two values, let's say in the first equation, if C sub one and C sub two are both zero, notice C sub three must also be zero. And therefore the only solution is the trivial solution. And therefore the set of vectors is linearly independent. Now if we did want to solve this, using an augmented matrix I've shown the work below, where the first equation gives us the row two, three, one, zero. The second equation gives us the row one, zero, zero, zero. The third equation gives us the row zero, two, two, zero. And the fourth equation gives us the row zero, one, zero, zero. Writing the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, we have the matrix on the right. And once again, notice how the first row indicates that C sub one equals zero. The second row indicates that C sub two equals zero. The third row indicates that C sub three is equal to zero. We only have the trivial solution to the homogeneous vector equation indicating the set of vectors is linearly independent. So let's take a look at one more example. Here we have a set of four vectors and we're asked the same question. Is the set of vectors linearly independent or linearly dependent? Again, the first step is to set up the homogeneous vector equation and then write the corresponding equations, which I've done here on the right. For this system, we will definitely use an augmented matrix where the first row is one, one, zero, one, zero. The second row is two, one, three, three, zero. The third row is negative one, seven, one, negative nine, zero. And the fourth row is zero, two, negative two, negative two, zero. I've already written the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Notice how we have a row of zeros along the bottom. Remember the variables are C sub one through C sub four. Let's go ahead and label the columns. So the first row indicates that C sub one plus two C sub four is equal to zero. The second row indicates that C sub two minus C sub four equals zero. The third row indicates that C sub three equals zero. And notice how if we identify the pivot positions or the pivot columns, C sub one, C sub two, and C sub three are the basic variables or leading variables and C sub four is a free variable, which indicates, which indicates the system has an infinite number of solutions and therefore the vector equation has more solutions than just the trivial solution, which indicates the set of vectors is linearly dependent. If we wanted to state the solutions for C sub one through C sub four, since C sub four is a free variable, we can say C sub four equals C sub four, and then we'd want to write C sub one and C sub two in terms of C sub four, so we'd have C sub one equals negative two C sub four. C sub two equals C sub four. C sub three equals zero. And C sub four equals C sub four. But this part really isn't necessary. As soon as we know we have more solutions than the trivial solution, we know the set of vectors is linearly dependent. I hope you found this helpful.